Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to another trip episode. I've no idea what number trip this is, so we'll just skip the number part. We are just north of Durian Bay, Western Australia, and we are in a, heading towards a place called Sandy Cape, where there's a lot of good camping to be had and uh, a lot of really nice beaches. So that's our first stop. Our intention is to the next day to head a lot further south and come out at Wedge, but more on that a bit later. at the coastal tracks now and we're this part of Sandy Cape I've never been to and it's quite exciting to check out look at the beach can't get much better than that so we're just going around trying to figure out where's the best place to camp and then we'll go for a bit of an explore afterwards so we're not driving around at dusk looking for a place to camp As you can see, this track here is completely windswept. We encountered a lot of this on day one. This is a perfect example of getting out of your car and checking before you drive it, because if you take this on the wrong angle too fast, she's gonna tip over. So as you can see now, it's squared up a lot more for them. So the more vehicles that come down here, this track will actually fix itself. Here we are having lunch. We're still looking for a good camp spot we found a few potential good spots um this part of sandy cape i've been to before and it's a bit weird i haven't so we're just relaxing now pretty much finished lunch and we're going to head a bit further down the beach and check out a few other points of interest which we found with the drone a bit earlier so we'll see how we go campsite better than ones we already knew about on the other side so we decided to turn around and head back and Torben ended up in front because of a few tight turns and a few wrong turns. We're now going to continue on to the section that we are quite familiar with. Uh, Torben's just going to stay in front because there's not much room to get in front of him and he knows this part of Sandy Cape quite well because We've been here many times before. We actually operate tag along tours up here where people bring their own cars with them and uh, we show them, show them around. We teach them a few things about how to drive off-road and stuff like that too. So 
this is one of our main operating areas and for a good reason it's a bloody beautiful fantastic area Running quickly through the camp setup we got. So at the moment, this is Brian's setup. He's behind the camera at the moment. There's only three of us here. Hopefully, this is enough light. So that's his awning tent. Awning tent, yeah. Yes. Awning tent. All right. Nice cozy little room there. And then over here, the chair. Here, I'm in the swag again, always in the swag, unless I'm with the family. We've got all our cooking stuff set up here. Before we get to the cooking stuff, let's go over to Torben. How you going, mate? Good, yourself? <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah. You gonna sleep like this tonight, are you? Possibly. Yeah, it's pretty warm. It is warm. No fire tonight, unfortunately. Fire ban. So you gotta respect the fire ban. There's been a lot of fires around lately. We don't want to start another one. So Torben's in his swag and um, you sit up there with your fridge, all your beverages. Oh, you got Jim and Jack today. Yeah. <laughs> Jack's nearly no, gone. No Sally. No Sally. No <laughs> Sally. <laughs> Righto, and tonight we are going to be cooking on two different things. So I'm going to do a roast in the Weber Q and I'm going to throw that on soon. So you probably see that on the screen. And Brian is trying this new Coleman Gladiator. Is it called a Gladiator? Well, it's called a Fire Knight. Gladiator series. Fire Knight. Fire Knight. Coleman. Fire Knight. Fire with a Y. And this thing here, apparently, well, not apparently, it works on the wind. So if the wind comes in from the side, it's supposed to help with cooking. So we'll check that out. Uh, the Weber Q does like a Circulate, circulation thing in here is like a gap on the side so that's going to have a pork roast in it and over here we're going to, you're going to have hamburgers yeah is that right hamburgers and some kranskis we're going to chop up so i'm getting hungry just thinking about it Just making us some coffees, and then we're gonna head up this hill just behind behind the cruisers here. So we're gonna start the morning with a bit of a mild rush. The mission today is to get to North Head, which is where there are two World War II bunkers. So we're gonna check them out, they're pretty cool. But on the way there, it's gonna be a little bit interesting. We had a brief look yesterday. 
didn't drive too much of it, but due to a recent storm that's been in this area, it's blown all the sand kind of sideways across the track. So there's a lot of off-camber driving and the entrance to the sand bowl, which you've got to get to to get up the, um, up the cliffs, uh, looks quite interesting. So should have a bit of fun with that this morning. And then after that, we'll uh, take off to a place called Hill River. pretty easy thing to happen. You have to get your timing spot on for this to work properly. Right, so poor Torben stuck on the mound there. He just needs a gentle tug and then he's down. And here we are at the top of North Head, soaking up some million dollar views. This is a close-up of that pinnacle you saw, which is a memorial for Robert Murray Bartle, 
It was taken by a great white in 1967. Here we are at these bunkers. You got one here and you one over there. Now these bunkers were to house diesel generators to power some radars that were here over the World War II period and then kind of been converted just to like a camp I guess. It was then time to hit the tracks again and get back out of that sand bowl which uh, Torben got stuck on before and head towards Hill River. Hill River, one of my favourite places to take the family. Here you get the ocean on one side and the river on the other. After a bit of relaxing time and lunch of course, we then headed south towards the town site of Cervantes, taking the coastal tracks and the beach of course. On the way there are plenty of sand dune systems, some of these are great fun to have a play on. After a bit more driving, we arrived at this beach here. This section you can only pass at low tide. So we took advantage of exactly that. Sand's getting really boggy here, so I've let my tyres down a bit more. I didn't really have beach pressures, uh, so I was on 20, 25, 20 front, 25 rear. Now I've lowered them to 12 front and 16 rear. Hopefully that'll be enough to get us the last bit away. We're pretty close, but I'm not sure what's up ahead there, so I'm going to drive up ahead solo and see if it's passable first. We opted to get off the beach temporarily because it got really boggy and really narrow up ahead and then we got back on the beach and headed towards Cervantes. With Cervantes in our sights, it was then time to air up, head straight for camp and prepare 
prepare for our very last day. morning it's day three we left really early this morning done a lot of driving and we are halfway between grey to wedge we're heading south towards wedge and because we got up extra early it's a bit dark to cook breakfast so we're having a bit of a breakfast on the beach You want yours flip? No. This morning's mission is to head south to the dunes. We'll make our way through the sand dunes. It's quite a decent sized system. Probably take us a good couple of hours, maybe even half a day, depending on how bad the wind swept the dunes are. Sometimes it can be quite a bit of a maze to get through. And then head down to the wedge settlement down to the point where the island is and have a bit of relaxed time before we end the trip. We then reached Wedge Island Dunes and they were pretty darn windswept so it did take us a little bit of effort to get through but we had a lot of fun in doing so.
it was then time to peel ourselves away from the dunes because we were having a lot of fun. But we needed to get back down to the beach so we could get back on track. end of our coastal trip. Now we are on the point of Wedge Island. Wedge Island is just behind Torben's cruiser right here. We have done a few other videos here so if you want to check out the Land Cruiser video that we did, check that out. Description below, up in the corner there as well. You can subscribe right here. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'm now going to have some lunch. Take care of the tracks and trails. See ya. Can't crawl it, you can't drive it. <laughs>